Good evening. I'd like to offer you a warm welcome to tonight's HCC webinar. This evening we will be looking at the new Welsh Hill Sheep Breeding Index, which has been developed as part of the Hill Ram Scheme. We have two excellent speakers who will be guiding us through choosing the right tuck for the sheep flock. First up is Janet Roden, an independent sheep geneticist who's been working within the industry for over 30 years. She'll be followed by Samuel Boone, who is the head of Signet and manages the National Sheep Breeding Programme. Following this webinar, there's an opportunity to ask questions in the live Q&A session, so please do submit your questions. Hi, thank you, Heather. I want to talk to you about some of the genetic tools you've got available to you to help you improve returns in your hill flocks and some of the developments in those tools that have been made over the last few months. I thought a good place to start would be to think about what makes a successful hill flock. And HCC have recently commissioned a report with the other levy boards looking at the characteristics of high performing beef sheep farms in Great Britain. In that report, they had some nice data on Welsh hill flocks. And in characterising top performers and bot performers, they showed this data relating to income from them. So these flocks are matched in terms of topography, size and type. And yet the difference between the top and the bottom performers was almost £40,000 in income. Now, I found that quite striking as it illustrates the potential there is for improvement in a lot of hill flocks in Wales. Genetics is one way, among others, that we can improve returns. But one of the benefits of using genetics is we know it's a cost effective way. We make cumulative improvements that build on themselves year on year, making them both sustainable and permanent. Unlike maybe other changes that we could make where we have to do, put constant input every year to achieve those gains. However, in order to make gains for those important components that are going to influence income, such as lambs reared per you, live weight sold, carcass weights, and are reducing our cost of production through genetics, we can't do that without actually measuring the performance of a sheep on the hill. Or if we don't want to use, do that, we can buy in recorded rams to take advantage of someone else having made those measurements. So are recorded rams really worth the effort and cost? Well, the evidence is really quite clear that they are. So here I've got some data that comes from flocks in the hill ram scheme that started recording in 2019. And in those flocks, they were running both recorded sires and unrecorded sires from unrecorded flocks. But when we compare the lambs at weaning, we see that on average, the progeny of the sires that had come from recorded flocks were 2.4 kilos heavier at that point of weaning, which when you work it out on a per lamb basis is worth about four pounds per lamb and over a ram's lifetime, just over a thousand pounds. So clearly they are very much worth that effort and cost. So we have various EBVs that we can use as tools to tweak some of those things that affect our income and our returns and our cost of production in our flock. So we've got a litter size EBV that can help us tweak that lambs reared per you, maternal ability EBVs, an eight week weight EBV that helps to tweak live weight sold, but also the scan weight EBV can be used for that. And then muscle depth and fat depth EBVs that will help us influence carcass weights and quality. But we need to remember that cost of production is very important. And one of the main costs that we have in our flock is maintaining the ewes. So we have a ewe weight EBV that we can help use to help tweak that. So the EBVs are tools that can help us tweak various traits and help us assess the value of the genes that the ram or ewe will pass on to their progeny. It's much more effective for these sorts of traits than appearance because appearance will also be influenced by non-genetic effects such as feeding and those aren't passed on to the lambs. So the EBVs are an objective way of comparing rams and they compare them on a level playing field. As well as the EBVs, we have an index 
And that combines all the EBVs into one score that helps us rank sheep. So it helps us identify the all-rounders. And that's exactly what we need in hill sheep. We're looking for animals that are good all-rounders. So the index helps us balance all that information. Now, both EBVs and indexes have been available for hill sheep for a long time. But in recent months, there have been quite some quite big developments in the way Signet evaluates the hill sheep and some improvements to the system of producing those tools for you to use. So recently, they've moved to monthly analyses of data to keep EBVs really up to date, helping both breeders and buyers make very timely decisions. That will help to drive genetic improvement in flocks. They've also adopted a multi-breed approach, so analyzing all hill sheep breeds together so they can pull in data from different breeds, from crossbreds and commercial data, and making the introduction of new EBVs that are really important, such as lamb survival and new longevity, much easier because it can be spread across a number of different breeds. All EBVs has also been updated to incorporate all the latest research, making them more accurate. And carcass traits are now going to be evaluated on a weight adjusted basis to more closely reflect the way that we commercially market lambs compared to how they were done before. So again, making them more commercially relevant. Also, the way that new animals that are unrecorded are brought into the system and evaluated is being updated and improved to make the system a little bit fairer to those as well. But the thing I want to talk more about is the index that combines all those EBVs has also been updated. And that's an area of the work that I've been particularly involved in. So why did we feel we needed to update that index? Well, there's a number of different reasons. As a result of the Hill Ram scheme, the number of people in recording Hill sheep has greatly increased. And the number of Hill sheep that are recorded and Hill Rams that are available for sale that are recorded is going to increase greatly over the next few years. Because of that, we felt that we really needed to sharpen the focus to make sure that those rams and the breeding programs behind them were really meeting the needs of commercial hill flocks. As I've just talked about, a lot of elements of the evaluation and the calculation of the EBVs has been updated. And so we wanted to be able to incorporate all that into the index to improve the index. There are also some exciting new opportunities out there for new EBVs, such as lamb survival, which will be developed very soon, and also in a slightly longer term, ewe longevity, both important traits in hill sheep. And over the years, we've been listening to the ideas of breeders and ram buyers about the index and have been able to incorporate some of their suggestions into the new index. So overall, what do we want this index to achieve? Well, we want it to be able to identify sheep that are going to improve returns on Welsh hill flocks. So there's a very sharp focus on that. But we're also keeping in the back of our mind being able to increase market opportunities for hill lamb by increasing carcass weight. We're all very well aware that the market for the light lamb is decreasing and in the future is likely to decrease further. By increasing carcass weight, it increases the market opportunities for those lambs. And so that's something that's important to achieve. We also have an eye on the future and the environmental requirements and landscape management requirements that are likely to be there in the future for hill sheep. And thinking about the future, it's also about sheep that can be farmed sustainably on hill ground while managing that environment and managing that landscape that we all value and love. So how do we go about designing this index? Well, we need to think of some important things. So firstly, we think about how important are the individual traits in terms of what they actually leave on the bottom line in a Welsh hill flock. So there's quite a lot of work going into thinking about different Welsh hill flocks and taking a whole range of them. For, so from the quite hard hill with a small U, something like the Snowdonia type, 
to a kinder hill with a bigger U and seeing how the traits would influence the bottom line in those flocks, looking at it over the whole range, and then be able to incorporate that information into how those traits should be balanced in the index. But having done that, we took a little bit of a step back from what the economics were telling us and moderated those to some extent to kind of what seemed like common sense and some of the messages we were getting and what we might think might be required in the future to moderate those to allow for future changes. Having done that, we used that, fed that information into some calculations to actually calculate the index weights and balance all the different traits into that index. Then having done that, we had a prototype index, which we then tried out using data from real flocks, just to check that it really was identifying the sheep that were going to do best in those flocks, and then tweaked things a little bit until we felt we'd got it exactly right. So using that procedure, we've developed a new index that's going to be used to rank rams within the Welsh hill breeds. It's an evolution, not a revolution. So it's a tweaking on the previous index, but an improved focus on commercial outcomes for those rams. So a ram that ranks highly on the new index, we'd expect to improve lamb survival in a flock, obviously a very, very important trait in hill flocks. And that influence on lamb survival will become even greater when the EBV for lamb survival has been developed in the next few years. A high ranking ram should also improve the weight of lamb weaned per ewe in a flock and improve carcass weight and grade. The daughters of those rams we'd expect to hold their condition better but not necessarily be any bigger so the index is designed to limit increases in new weight. And in terms of lambs reared per ewe, we'd also expect rams ranking highly on the index to have daughters that have a very slight increase in their scanning percentage. But that increase is very small, about 0.5% per year. So in flocks that currently scan very low, we'd expect that to manifest it itself in lower barren rates in the flock, so increasing scanning percentage. But in flocks that are scanning uh, higher, let's say 140%, slightly higher proportion of twins in the flock. So that's our new hill index, and I'm going to hand over to Sam. I'll be very happy to answer any questions, so feel free to channel those in through Heather. Thank you. Welcome to this presentation on finding and using breeding information when buying hill rams. Uh, this is a presentation to assist commercial buyers over the coming season and to talk a little bit about the breeding values that are available. My name's Sam Boone. I work for Signet Breeding Services uh, and occasionally get out and about on farm um, and I can be contacted at the following email address. So most of the information that you actually need for hill sheep is hosted on the new Signet database. Uh, we've completely updated the hill sheep breeding evaluation and all of the information uh, is available there. Uh, these are the bits that you can see prior to logging in and we're going to look at the sheep search function. Now within this we have three areas of interest for today. We have the flock finder which tells us where our nearest flock is. We have the quick search so that we can actually look at individual animal records and we have the sheep for sale section and we'll talk about that towards the end. Within Flock Finder, if you simply put in the breed and the postcode, um, it will then pull back some records and you can quickly see the location of flocks that are performance recording that are close to you. And there's also a click through so you can see the latest breeding values for live animals owned within the flock. So a very quick way to get the information that's of interest. If we head to the sheep search, uh, then again we put in the breed and if you put in the first bit of the UK ministry tag, then you actually get all of the animals uh, on the database uh, within that flock. If you do the same thing but put in the full tag, 
then uh, you get the specific animal of interest. So if you want to check an animal in your flock, that's the information to put in. You have to put in the spaces in exactly the format shown. So UK space zero space, the flock number space and the individual animal ID. So if you click through in any of those areas, it takes you to the breeding values. And actually, there's lots of ways that breeding values are presented. So if you head online, you'll often see charts. If you head to sales, you'll see a slightly tidier version of that chart with the main breeding values of interest. If you look at sale catalogues, you'll see this type of format and Excel spreadsheets are also provided. But it's the same information. You've got a series of breeding values and then you've got a series of accuracy values for each of those EBVs um, to actually show you how much data is behind those records. So we're just going to talk through an example now. Uh, if we head to this particular example uh, from the, the latest evaluation, we've got a set of estimated breeding values. Now, estimated breeding values are a prediction of the, the genetic merit or the breeding potential of that animal for a specific trait. So they take into account all known relatives um, be their ancestors or these are actually stock rams we're looking at so uh, any progeny they've produced and the other thing to say is that EBVs are expressed in real units of measurement so a scan weight EBV of 3.6 means that animal has the genetic potential to be 3.6 kilograms heavier than a ram with an EBV of zero obviously rams will only pass on half their genetic merit the other half coming from the ewes that you put them to but you would expect on average this ram would give you progeny that are 1.8 kilos heavier uh, than a ram with an EBV of zero. So let's have a look at the individual traits of interest. Uh, the eight week weight EBV indicates lamb growth rate to eight weeks of age. Litter size EBV indicates rams whose daughters will go on to produce more lambs. The uh, maternal ability EBV indicates rams whose daughters will produce more milk and thus rear heavier lambs. The scan weight EBV indicates uh, rams whose lambs will grow faster through to scanning time. The muscle depth and the fat depth EBVs tell you a bit about carcass conformation uh, at a fixed live weight so to find more muscular uh, breeding stock or either uh, fatter or leaner progeny and then the overall index which has been developed by Janet Roden uh, talks about overall uh, superiority based on uh, some of those attributes. So I talked about the EBVs obviously litter size and the growth traits fairly obvious with simply counting lambs born and uh, weighing lambs to get the, the measurements that go into those. In terms of assessing muscle and fat well, we actually use ultrasound uh, measuring muscling across the loin, look at muscling at the deepest point and then taking three measurements of fat depth to pick up important differences in carcass attributes and the Signet team uh, and the Inivis team that support us will measure thousands of lambs across the season. Maternal ability is probably one of the more complicated traits to, to understand. Obviously in the first generation when we use a ram then all we see expressed is his genes for growth rate that are passed on to his progeny. Um, we use him over a second generation and the same scenario with his sons. Obviously there's a dilution effect um, over, over the generations but again we see his genes being expressed through uh, his sons through the grand progeny. But if we look at his daughters, well again his genes for growth are being expressed but we also see an expression of the genes uh, that we can attribute to maternal ability. So there's an element there that relates to how much milk they produce, but also to maternal care, how close they actually stay to those lambs and convert that milk into weight. So if the female breeding line is constantly producing heavier lambs than the male breeding line, on average, the same genes of growth apply. And so we can actually tease out that maternal component over time. You can see it takes longer to assess and you can see it takes two generations to uh, where you've got a new ram coming in to assess um, his maternal ability once his daughters are on the ground. But extremely important in uh, hill sheep breeding programs. So back to our example, you've got the EBVs, but now we've also listed the accuracy figures. 
So those tell us how much data uh, goes into an animal's uh, overall estimated breeding value. Um, this animal has quite high accuracy figures. That's partly due to the fact that it is a stock ram. Uh, so it already has progeny on the ground as well as a number of well-recorded ancestors. What does accuracy tell us? Well, it tells us how likely it is that an animal's breeding values are going to change over time. So they're going to be high for stock rams and lower for uh, young untested rams. They're an indication of risk. And then if we look at that information in a chart format, you can very quickly see where an animal excels uh, relative to, to others that may be on sale. So the average for the year is the midpoint on the graph. Anything this side of the line tends to be deemed to be above average, so more growth, more numbers born uh, and more muscular or slightly fatter and anything this side of the line tends to be less. So if you're looking for leaner genetics then you'd look for a fat depth um, that is presented on that side of the line. You'll see the same sort of information presented at uh, RAM sales um, but in this scenario, uh, so you've got the EBDs and accuracies, but in this scenario, you actually want to get hold of the breed benchmark so that you can put that animal in context and see where he ra ranks against the rest of the breed. It's really important to match the right rams to the right farm. So in this example here, we've got ram A, uh, and uh, from this we can see that he scores really highly in terms of his genetics for maternal ability and also for muscling. Uh, you wouldn't have the fastest growth rate in the world, so they're not necessarily going to be the biggest sheep, and so that might mean that increases in new mature size will be more modest. Um, and he's also not the highest in terms of prolificacy. So for farms, maybe on a harder hill environment that have got the right number of lambs, they don't necessarily want to push uh, up the number of lambs dropped. That might be a really good choice. For Ram B, you can see that he tends to have higher level of performance for numbers of lambs born and also is higher in terms of his scanway TBV. So you'd predict the lambs would grow faster. You'd also predict that the ewes would tend to be a little bit bigger over time. And this one sits a little bit lower for his muscling characteristics. So knowing that information means that you can find the rams that best match your farming system. In terms of finding rams this year, the, uh, the challenge is obviously that we have a lack of uh, ram sales uh, or multi-vendor sales um, taking place. Um, but uh, we've got the ability to make contact with breeders and flock finder will assist in that area. We've also got the ability to take part in online auctions and indeed there is a list of sheep that are for sale on the Signet website so that can also be a useful help. In addition to that, then a number of breeders have set up Facebook sites and have an increasing online presence. In terms of the Signet Sheep for Sale section, uh, we've got a number of breeds listed here. Welsh Mountains would be somewhere off, off the bottom because this is listed alphabetically. But if you go onto the page, if you click on any of those individual numbers, it promptly takes you through to information about the breeding potential and the ownership of animals uh, that are currently for sale. Uh, at this moment in time. So there's more information on the Signet website for some of the animals that are being sold this year. And just as an example of one of the breeding groups that are working together to increase uh, both their online presence and create new ways of, uh, of selling and exchanging uh, genetics would be the Pro Hill group. So you can have a look at their website and uh, I know they've got a sale that's coming up uh, shortly as well. It would be remiss of me not to finish off by talking about uh, ensuring you don't bring disease into the flock. So think carefully when buying rams. I always suggest trying to buy early in the season. You get the best pick of the breeding values that are available. Obviously teeth, toes and testicles, structural soundness is extremely important. And take care in terms of not buying overfed rams where uh, fertility may suffer as a result. And then there's a great scary list there of diseases and health challenges that we need to avoid bringing onto the farm, either through buying rams from health schemes or through quarantining rams really carefully before they set foot on the farm. And then once you've got your rams, it's important to look after them. So making sure they're in good body condition score, coming up to topping, 
carrying out an MOT, doing fertility checks if there are any suspect rams uh, within that group, particularly if there's single sire mating. And there's a fantastic publication from HCC that's actually well worth a read all around this particular topic. So that is the end of this presentation. Uh, if you'd like more information about information about uh, breeding values or individual animal records, then do head to the Signet website. Okay, many apologies folks for the uh, slight technical hitch that we've experienced this evening. Um, I'd like to thank Sam and Janet very much for some excellent presentations um, and welcome you all now to a question and answer session. We've had a fair few questions coming in and um, I'll start with a nice, a nice one for Sam, I think. Um, how easy is it to compare EBVs between flocks? Oh, you said you'd start with an easy one. Um, it really depends on the degree of linkage that exists between those flocks. So where flocks have shared rams or have genetics that have commonly been swapped between them uh, in previous years, then you can make a comparison between those flocks. But if flocks are very distantly linked uh, and they, they haven't used those same shared genetics, then you shouldn't really be making those comparisons. You'd be better to actually look at the ranking of sheep within the flock and then choose accordingly the best animals from, from within that flock. So over time, we're going to work together to create some uh, simple tools and software that actually explains the degree of linkage between flocks. But for now, it's about chatting to people about shared linkage and making those decisions accordingly. OK, great. Thank you very much. OK, I'll go back to the easy one then. Um, someone's saying, do I need to sign up to look at EBVs? Oh, uh, so the, the very simple answer is that it's all in the public domain. So if you just head to the Signet website and the sheep search section, you don't need to log in. Uh, it's freely accessible. You've got the EBVs there for several million sheep um, at your disposal. And it also gives you indications of their uh, family tree as well as their genetic merit for all these individual traits. So yeah, all freely available, I'm pleased to say. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Um, Janet, there's somebody here has asked, um, how can one index be used when a hill and a hill's flocks vary so much across Wales? Okay, well that's a good question. Um, we recognise that there is a huge amount of variation in the hill flocks and the hill sheep across Wales. And when we were developing the index, we looked carefully to try and look across the whole of that variation and make sure the index was going to fit for them all. Um, so ultimately it has to be a little bit of a compromise but um, generally a high index sheep in any flock should perform better than a low index sheep. Okay great thank you thank you for that and then another one really for you um, uh, why is the U weight included in the index we talked a bit about mature weights and, um, and the importance um, perhaps you could elaborate on that a bit. Yeah U weight um, an important trait we know that um, the U weights directly, directly related to how much you can eat and the stocking rate you can have. So it's a large element of your cost. So it's something that we need to control in terms of cost in a production system. Um, but genetically, we know that a lot of the traits that we want to improve, such as lamb growth, um, lamb survival, etc., tend to be associated with bigger U's. So if we select for those traits that we want to improve will tend to get bigger use unless we actively do something about it. So by having it included in the index, it means we can look for smaller use that are productive. So if you like the rule breakers, um, and that's what we're looking for to try and stop you weight going up too much, which it would do if we didn't control it. Okay. Oh, great. Um, and th another comment, sort of on a similar, not weight, but condition. Um, somebody said, um, over lean news are no good to me on the hill. So how, how does the index um, aim to try and deal with that potential problem? Well, that is a problem that we recognise. There's been quite a bit of research in terms of that. And a lot of the research will say that actually um, well-muscled ewes are probably the ones that are going to hold their condition best. Um, but when we've been developing the index, one of the things that we've aimed to do is make it so that it will actually select the use that are going to hold their condition better. Um, so in fact, there's a slightly positive weighting on fat depth 
in the index. Um, and it will actually hopefully identify the ewes that are going to produce good lambs but are going to hold their condition as well. Okay, and, and will that um, positive weighting on the fat have any have you, any effect on the carcass quality? Um, there's quite a heavy weighting in the index that's going to hopefully drive carcass weight up. Um, so you've kind of got a number of different things happening at the same time there. So if carcass weight will go up, there would be very, if carcass weight didn't go up, there would be a very slight increase in fat grade. But because carcass weight is going up, um, that should counteract any increases in fat. Okay, that, that explains that really well, actually. Thank you. Um, another one's come in, actually, um, on a slightly different tack. You know, is there any potential in the future for um, health EBVs to be included in, in the index? Well, I'll, I'll take that. Sam likes to take. Sam likes to take that first. <laughs> yeah. Well. Break, yeah. <laughs> at, at the end of the day, if if you can measure something and you can get several thousand of those measurements, uh, then you can determine whether it's genetic. And if you can determine if it's genetic, then you can produce breeding values. Then the question is, what's his economic value? Uh, and clearly health traits have an economic value. So on that basis, you would then work them into the breeding index. The thing that you need to have a real look at is to see whether they are related to other traits you're selecting for and see if there's any antagonisms uh, that might arise between things that are already important to you. But um, certainly you could develop health traits over time. One of the sort of all encapsulating ways we're going to try and look at health is through uh, use survival EBVs. So that will actually indirectly select for healthier use, use that have a longer productive lifespan. And that data can actually be mined from the database. The nice thing about it is without the need for additional data to be collected. Essentially, we know when animals are born, we know how long they go on and have a productive life in the flock. Uh, and other research work we've done in the past has shown a genetic component to that. So that's a long-winded answer to say the short answer is yes, generally if you can measure it, you can produce breeding values and build them into indexes. And secondly, we've actually got some quite nice work planned uh, with Janet's help and others um, to actually work on, on use survival, which has a very high economic importance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did, Janet, did you have any more comment on any work planned on lamb survival? Is there anything well, else? I mean, that's lamb. the element that I would add to that is that we imminently we want to also develop an EBV for lamb survival, um, which is, you know, the ultimate health trait in a way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, good, good answer. Thank you. Um, yeah, sort of moving on, uh, maybe back to Sam, give Janet a bit of a rest again. Um, how much does it cost to record and, and how can I, how do I supply the data if I did want to become involved in yeah. um, selecting breeding animals? Well, obviously a number of the hill flocks are, are engaged in recording and hence get support as part and the parcel of that. But the vast majority of signet flocks um, certainly with terminal sire and maternal breeds just pay directly. Um, we brought down the fee structure a couple of years ago because we had more and more people that were either able to supply the data electronically, so pressing a button on their um, farm software and sending us all the information that we needed via Excel spreadsheets. So that's one option that's really well suited for the very big flocks. Um, but equally, we've got some of the smaller flocks that are quite happy to key the data in. So the data can be typed in directly into lambing forms on the new Signet website. That data goes in directly. And again, that's a cost saving. So for flocks that are sending in data either electronically or online, the price at the moment, so in 2020, is uh, £95 a flock. And then it's £2.50 a U for the first 50 U's. And then the next hundred are an extra two pounds a U, and then the next hundred and fifty are a pound a U after that. So, it, it's a sort of a scale where we're we're trying to support the the medium and the larger size flocks, as well as the smaller ones to get involved in recording. Okay. And okay. There's still a paper service out there, um, but farmers have fairly quickly moved to the electronic because it is that just that bit cheaper. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Um, how many? Um, do you, how, how do you feel the number of performance recorded rams is in, increasing? Uh, who'd, like to, who'd like to answer that one? I, I think I, the questions that came in, is, 
to what extent is performance recording the number of performance recorded rams increasing over the in yeah. in a general sense it, yeah. it it's changing between the various breeds so there are some breeds where the, the number is increasing quite rapidly others where it's it's more static it's always been a challenge in the past uh in terms of getting high numbers of hill flocks recording that's part of the reason that this project has been involved uh, and developed and because the nice thing is you've now got this critical mass so we've got different types uh, of hill ram that are all recorded as part of this analysis so that regardless of the, the type that you actually want on your hill there will be sheep out there with records so i don't have the number of flocks and the number of lambs instantly to hands janet might do um, with regard to that but over the next couple of seasons there's going to be increasing number recognizing that you know hill rams will typically be shearlings uh, and in some cases older that are being sold so year one has been very much about recording those lambs it starts getting exciting when we get to year two and there'll be more of the first scanned offspring coming onto the market yeah. I think just to kind of pick up on that there were this year the kind of 2020 lambing in the within the hcc hill ram scheme there were over 10,000 ewes recorded so you know that's going to get flow through the system into more rams coming into the market next year that are performance recorded but there are already more in the the um there's a sale on 17th of september um uh, hosted at innovis's farm at paces by the group that have called themselves pro hill and they have a number of rams for sale which is it's slightly more than they've had for sale in previous years as new breeders come into that yeah yeah so i mean i think there will be Ram, hill rams for sale this this year that you know there's already a bigger a, a more critical mass than there was even last year right. with more people coming onto the scheme that's that's really good to know yeah yeah it's it it's already been building in the last couple of years knowing that the project is being developed and underway yeah. uh, and not just welsh mountains we've got bueller's recorded as well of course yeah. Okay. Well, I think that about wraps up the questions that we've had in. Um, thank you both very much indeed for um, for hanging on in there and answering the questions. Um, it's, it's it's been really really good, and I hope um, anybody that missed it will be able to catch it on HCC or on HCC's YouTube or even on the Facebook platform. And I'd just like to let you know that the next webinar will be on the 14th of September, and it's about optimising um, upland pasture management with Non Williams, who's just finished a PhD at Bangor University. So hopefully you'll all be able to tune into that. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.